In this video, we're going to look at the symmetry group of the square. A square has eight symmetries, and the first four of them are rotations. And the first rotation is the do-nothing rotation, which our book calls the identity. And so we rotate either by zero degrees or we rotate by 360 degrees. So everything sends, lands in the same thing. And in two-row notation, this would be the permutation A, B, C, D. Uh, A goes to A, B goes to B, C goes to C, and D goes to D. Our R1 rotation is going to be a 90-degree rotation in the clockwise direction. And so when we do that, we get A, B, C, D labeled in that particular fashion. And the two-row notation here will be this. A landed in the B position, B landed in the C position, C landed in the D position, and D landed in the A position. Our R2 rotation is a 180-degree rotation in the clockwise direction. And when we do that, A lands here, B lands here, C lands here, and D lands here. In two-row notation, a landed in the C spot, B landed in the D spot, C landed in the uh, C landed in the A spot, and D landed in the B spot. And our final rotation is a 270 degree rotation in the clockwise direction, or you can think of that as a 90 degree rotation in the counterclockwise direction. And when we do this, we're going to have a landing here, B landing here, C landing here, and D landing here. And in the two-row notation, what I want to see is that A landed in the D slot, B landed in the A slot, C landed in the B slot, and D landed in the C slot. So there are the four rotations, both in geometry and in this two-row permutation notation. Well, let's look at the reflections now. There are also four reflections. The first reflection is going to be a reflection across a horizontal line. And when I reflect across a horizontal line, D and A change places, and C and B change places. So my two-row notation for keeping track of this particular permutation, this particular symmetry, would be A goes to D, uh, and D goes to A, and B goes to C, and C goes to B. My vertical symmetry is flipping over a vertical line, and when we do that, a and B switch places, and D and C switch places. So the two-row notation for keeping track of the vertical line of symmetry, the vertical flip, would be A goes to B, and B goes to A, C goes to D, and D goes to C. Now, the two diagonals, we have to arbitrarily decide which one we're going to call which, and I am going to call flipping over this, uh, what I think of as a northwest, uh, or rather a northeast-southwest diagonal, is going to be my first diagonal flip. So uh, it's going to fix B and D, and it's going to swap C and A. And so the D1 two-row notation will be, uh, let's see, a goes to C, B stayed put, C went to A, and D stayed put. Now the final symmetry of the square is a flip over the other diagonal. And uh, when we do this, A and C stay put, but D and B get swapped. And so the two-row notation for this symmetry will look like A stays put, B goes to D, C stays put, and D goes to B.
Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to look at um, composing two of these symmetries in both ways of composing them and seeing that this group is clearly not a commutative group. So let's now look at computing first do V, then do R3. Well, the first thing that I want to do is I want to think about what V does. V is the flip across a vertical line, and so the, the, the squares labels are B, A, C, D. And uh, then I want to do the R3 flip, rather the R3 rotation, which is a 270 degree rotation in the clockwise direction, and that puts A here, B here, C here, and D here. Uh, so now to compose these, so this is my R3 flip. To compose them using geometry, I first do V, And now I'm going to rotate this particular thing 270 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. And when I do, B is going to land here, A is going to land here, uh, D is going to land here, and C is going to land here. And if I think about what I'm really looking at relative to my original square, what I want to notice is that we have flipped over the D2 line. In other words, this is equal to D2. Now, if I want to compose the two-row notation, I can do V followed by R3. Well, V's two-row notation is going to be, let's see, a went to B, and B went to A, and C went to D, and D went to C, and the R3, notate, the R3 notation is A landed in the D slot, B landed in the A slot, C landed in the B slot, and, A la rather, and D landed in the C spot. And we're composing these things going in that direction, and when I compose them, I have A goes to B, and B goes to A, so A goes to A. And uh, then B goes to A, and A goes to D, so B goes to D. And C goes to D, and D goes to C, so C is fixed by the composition, and D goes to C, and C goes to B, so D goes to B. And this is indeed the two-row notation for the D2 permutation. If we compose them in the other direction, this is what we're going to get. We're going to be looking at R3, and R3 would be sending A down here, B here, C here, and D here. And then we're going to do a V flip which if I start in the standard position, it's going to have the top two vertices switching places and the bottom two vertices switching places. But what I want to do is I want to do the composition of first do R3, then do V. So if I do R3, I get this particular label And then if I do a vertical flip on this label, I have C, B, D, A. And if I think about going from the original square to this square, what I notice is that I have got the flip along the D1 line. In other words, first do R3, then do V, is going to be my D1 flip. And I can indeed do the uh, two-row notation computation if I want to. The R3 permutation is uh, A wound up going to D, 
B wound up going to A, C wound up going to B, and D wound up going to C. And the D, uh, rather, and the V flip uh, to row notation is A goes to B and B goes to A, C goes to D and D goes to C. We are composing things in this order, and when we do our tracing, we have A goes to D and D goes to C, so A went to C. B went to A and A went to B, so B lands at B. C went to B and B went to A, so C lands in the A slot, and finally D goes to C and then C goes to D, so C wind, rather, so D winds up at the D slot, and this is indeed the two-row notation for the D1 permutation. The last thing that I want you to do in this video is to find the entire Cayley table for the set of symmetries of the square. It turns out that we call the uh, group of symmetries of the square the name D4, which is the dihedral group of, it's technically of order 8, but uh, it's referred to as the dihedral group D4. And I want you to stop the video and I want you to find the Cayley table for D4 using the names of the symmetries that I have introduced in this particular video. And when you think that you're done, I want you to start the video again and compare your table to the table that I am going to show you. So hopefully you've done that. Here is the full Cayley table for D4. Now, there, it's important to understand that there is a convention in reading this. We look at first do the thing in the column and then do the thing in the row. So in other words, if I am looking at uh, the um, V column and the R3 row, so I am looking at this particular entry, that is first do V, then do R3, which of course we write as first do V, then do R3. Now, there are several things that I want to actually notice about this particular uh, Cayley table. If we look at composing rotations with rotations, it's no surprise we get a rotation. But it's also interesting to notice that if we look at composing the reflections with other reflections, or as I typically call them, a flip with a flip, when we compose the flips together, we get, ro we get rotations. And when we wind up composing rotations and flips together, we wind up getting the flips. So in other words, this Cayley table naturally breaks down into four little chunks, and it's easy to see that this is not a commutative group because we do not have symmetry across the main diagonal. But it is worth noting that when we compose two rotations, we get a rotation. That's the green part of the table. Uh, when we compose two flips, we get a rotation. That's the other part of the that's the other part of the table that I've highlighted in green. And finally, when we compose a flip and a rotation in either order, we get a flip. And that's everything that we really need to know about the dihedral group D4.